And a very good evening, everyone, along Facebook Live. Rich DeMarco here with you on Ask the AD, a new show we are bringing you here across the Army Sports Network for Army West Point Athletics. We'll be coming to you periodically. Your chance to ask questions to the Director of Intercollegiate Athletics here at Army West Point, and that is Mike Buddy. We'll be here. You can drop your questions in the comments section, and we appreciate you watching along Facebook Live here tonight. Mike Buddy, welcome to our inaugural edition on Facebook Live of Ask the AD. Thank you, Rich. You know, it, it seems weird calling you Rich because as you and I both know, I usually refer to you as the voice. You're, you're kind of like Madonna. You know, you can just, you are the voice of, of Army Athletics. So uh, thrilled to, to try this new venture with you. I appreciate you having me on. I look forward to this and, and hopefully more of them. And there's a lot going on across Army Athletics. Of course, uh, football team reporting today, practice beginning tomorrow, about one month away from the opener, actually one day less than a month on September 4th on the road at Georgia State. Lots gone on here over the last several months. No doubt. Yeah, bittersweet, right? You and I were talking earlier, Rich. It's 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 kind of sad that summer's over, but you know the flip side of that is we're, we're about to start a fall season uh, of Army athletics in, in full swing before we know it. So, you know, what a strange journey we've been on, you know, 15 months of of turmoil, you know, social injustice, global pandemic, um, name, image, and likeness, NCAA issues, um, college football playoff expansion, conference realignment. Um, you know, I look back and I'm so proud of so many things that our coaches and our cadet athletes were able to achieve. But, you know, um, you know, I've got this minor league mentality, this old you know, I'm, I'm an old wrestler and, and I don't remember the wrestling matches that I won. I remember the ones that I lost and th those are the ones that haunt me. And, you know, most college athletic department, we spend the summer months looking back on the wrestling matches that we lost. Right. So we've, okay. we've had a great productive summer. You've been involved in a lot of it where we look back and see where we fell short and, and how we can do better. What can we do to better support our cadet athletes? How can we better support our, our coaches? How do we represent the Academy? Right. I mean, it was, it was up, down, it was up, down. We won the commander in chief trophy. We had an issue in, in math 104 that was well publicized. And those are areas that we look at with a magnifying glass because it's really important that we represent the academy the way that th this academy deserves. The long gray line relies on us. And so to have, to have one cadet that, that falls short of that expectation, we, we need to look at ourselves and figure out, hey, where did we drop the ball? How can we communicate better? Make sure that they understand the expectations um, that we have of them. And that's, you know, they're still kids and, and they make sometimes great decisions, sometimes poor decisions. And so those are the things that we take advantage of in the summer to look back and, and recalibrate and say, hey, we, we, we have to do better. You know, let's let's not pat ourselves on the back. Certainly proud of the fact that all 30 of our varsity teams were able to compete. Sure. Uh, COVID testing two, three, sometimes four times a week. Um, but the Academy supported us in that venture. And so we owe it to the Academy and the long gray line to, to do everything that we can to, to keep m representing this, this phenomenal Academy in a, in a first rate uh, manner. Mike, you go back to late May, June, 2019, you come on board here at West Point and you have the run up to that year. You've said it at times, then obviously your, your second year leading in through COVID was much different. How do you feel this year? I guess, how close is it as we really embark on the start of this 2021-2022 academic and athletic year? How close is it to 2019? Well, heck of a lot closer was than it was a year ago, Rich. Um, you know, what we learned really was, there were several things that we learned, but you never let your guard down. You know, we, we felt like coming out of the spring, you know, baseball team was our last team to compete down in Lubbock after their third consecutive Patriot League championship, we kind of felt like things are going, looking really good. And then, you know, this Delta variant hits and, you know, you and I both know it, so, you know, some people haven't been back to the Academy in a long time. There may not be a better place on the planet to be when there is a crisis like we've faced with the pandemic, because we have Lieutenant General Daryl Williams and so many colonels and, and one-star and two-star generals who are helping us through the decision-making process. And, and leading us into this next uncharted territory. But, you know, I hope, knock on wood, um, we're going to be a heck of a lot closer to 2019 feeling than we were to 2020 feelings. But, you know, COVID's got to vote and uh, we'll continue to, to battle it and make sure that we're making the best decisions 
based on the most reliable data uh, to keep everyone safe. Well, thanks again, everyone watching on Facebook Live. Drop any questions you have in the comment section. We'll get to as many as we can here tonight. And Mike and I segue into our first question of the night from Janet Anderson. She wants to know, have the requirements for attendance at sporting events this fall been decided? Full attendance or social distancing, masks, proof of vaccine, timed entry to events, tailgating, whole lot of questions in regards to really the overall question of how is attendance going to be handled this year? Yeah, excellent. And Janet, just to hear you ask about tailgating, just it makes me so happy um, to even be thinking about that. So um, we, we, are, we are operating. Um, we are assuming that we are going to be at 100% capacity. Um, so again, we will continue to monitor the, the global situation, certainly the local um, population trends and all of those things. But as of today, we absolutely have, have full expectations um, that if you are uh, unvaccinated, obviously you'll be wearing masks. Um, if you're vaccinated, it, we may get to a point uh, that we have to insist that there are some, some mandates, whether it's a mask or non-pharmaceutical interventions. But as of today, uh, the, the assumption is we're gonna compete and we are gonna sell tickets and we are gonna host events and we are gonna have tailgates. Um, but again, just keep that caveat in mind if things change, um, but we're waiting uh, a little bit closer to 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 kick off. Um, ironically, we actually are have our first exhibition this weekend um, with our women's soccer team in action. But uh, we will send out a massive slew of social media, website um, information as soon as we know 100% what the specific guidance will be. We hope to give you a, at least two weeks' notice so that you can prepare for whatever that might be. But but uh, thank you for asking. Great question. And, and I look forward to having you back here cheering on the Black Knights. And thank you, Janet, for the question. Mike, one game on the schedule sticks out the home schedule. Of course, six home games. First home game, September 11th against Western Kentucky, though that game October 23rd against the alma mater Wake Forest. How excited are you for the Black Knights to take on the Demon Deacons? So yeah, I'm thrilled, right? I mean, Army Navy is 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 why I get up every day, and in every one of our sports, Army Navy is is why I do what I do. Put our cadets in a in a national stage to celebrate who they are and what they do and represent the academy. That's a huge game. But but sir, I mean, selfishly, you know, Coach Munkin and I joked about it last year. He got a chance at, at Georgia Southern, which had a special meaning to him, uh, and we pulled out a phenomenal win against them. And um, you know, this is. Ironically, Bob Beretta and I joked, I, I was actually on the other end of the scheduling conversation when, when this contract was signed. It was Bob Beretta representing West Point and, and Mike Buddy representing uh, Wake Forest. And here we are, uh, finally, you know, 2021 is here. We get this first opportunity to host the Demon Deacons up here. And uh, let me be clear, there will be no torn allegiances. Uh, I, I expect the Black Knights to be ready to play. I know they will be Wake Forest really strong team. It'd be a great day, beautiful day in October uh, to celebrate a couple really good programs playing football. And, and big news really on the horizon, Mike, which has really been the, the big thrust over the last several weeks. And that's the official announcement of the Mikey Stadium Preservation Project, $95 million to completely redo the East Stands premium seating, club level seating. It, it's going to do a lot for Mikey Stadium, a lot for the Academy, a lot for Army Athletics. Take me through the, the lead up to that launch and how it's been going so far. Yeah, excellent. Really, really. I mean, you nailed it, Rich. I mean, it, it's so exciting to get an opportunity. If you think about this, it'll be another century before we have to do anything to address the East Stands. You know, Mikey Stadium is historic and it's, it's, it's beautiful. The experience is, is unrivaled in my opinion. Um, but houses get old, right? I mean, you have to you have to renovate kitchens and and fireplaces and, and stadiums are no different. Ninety five million dollars is a heck of a lot of money, um, and we're blessed to have so many people who care about the academy who have who have put themselves financially in a position to be able to significantly help. Um, you know, Boo Corrigan and General Caslin started this conversation well before my arrival, and and even Lieutenant General Williams and. Um, the cadets got involved and they talked about, you know, their, their vision for what a game day could feel like for them. And, you know, it's exciting because it'll impact every cadet who stands in the, in the bleachers and, and watches their team compete on Saturday afternoons. But it'll also create an element that, that Mikey Stadium just really hasn't had. I mean, we have a superintendent's loge. We have a couple suites there on the west side. 
but they're not they're not what you would consider premium areas as you know 40 miles down the road at MetLife Stadium um, you know if you if you want to create a, an atmosphere on a college football game day that rivals anyone in the country you know coach Munkin was quick to point out that uh, it shows progress it shows that West Point and Army Athletics um, does want to be uh, relevant in today's college athletics world and and we're certainly not going to to you know, put in uh, marble floors and and chocolate fountains. I mean, we're going to be great stewards of of this money, but it's going to modernize that side of the stadium. It'll allow us to utilize Mikey Stadium in the winter for, uh, for example, NHL hockey games, sure. um, con- concerts, you know, wedding receptions. If you get married at Cadet Chapel, you can come up to Mikey Stadium and use the club area for a reception. So. We've been very fortunate. Uh, it's a $95 million project. We're, we're over halfway there in, in verbal commitments and signed commitments. We got there pretty quickly uh, in terms of the announcement. But as I said, you know, Garrett Monroe and, and Boo Corrigan and, and Bob Caslin all started the heavy lifting three or four years ago. And then General Williams, myself, and now Chris Wood, who runs the fundraising arm, um, we've all gotten really busy. And so uh, it's one of those things that it's intimidating right now. We're going to get this done um, come hell or high water. And in 2025, when, when that stadium is done and complete, uh, it, it is going to be a, a wow factor that uh, that's really never been seen at Mikey Stadium. And westpointpremium.com. Fans can get involved, get the latest uh, on the project. And Mike, I know there's you know several layers to how this is being rolled out and in terms of um, donors and there's been so many amazing benefactors so far, some anonymous, and it's getting off to a really strong start. Yeah, absolutely, and we're, we're starting to do donor profiles, and and so you know the Healy family and the Lichtenberg family and so many others that have stepped up, several of whom prefer to stay anonymous, but but you know to me it speaks a lot. I, I, we've we've had two gifts already over over ten million dollars um, in total. Um, from people who, who don't want recognition, they don't want their names mentioned, um, but they want to support their, their class. You know, it, it is such a, a pride um, move for them to be in a position to do that um, under the radar, uh, but, but make significant um, impact on every cadet who's going to be here. You know, in, in addition to the premium and club areas, the vision is to have a restaurant that's in the, on the, the first floor of this place, um, this renovation you know, for the next hundred years, these cadets who are walking up the hill to the PX, the commissary to get their cars, you know, to be able to stop and grab a bite to eat. Um, f- for me, who lives right across across the reservoir here, to be able to go, I'll probably gain 15 pounds in the first year. To, to make it more prominent, we're going to put- i gain 30, a, a, yeah. That's right. You know, a segment of the Army Hall of Fame, right? I mean, you and yeah. I, we walk through the Kenna Hall of Sports all the time, and it's amazing the amount of memorabilia in there, yeah. but we're starting to outgrow it. And so to be able to showcase some of our unbelievably unique and successful history um, in this new facility is just going to be, it's just going to be amazing. So we're, we're fortunate to have people that are jumping on board. Um, we need more people to jump on board. Uh, you know, this is the most ambitious gift funded project in the history of West Point. And so um, we're going to need all hands on deck, and we're, we're just thrilled at, at the early returns on, on people stepping up and exceeding our expectations um, on, at the level that they, they want to be involved. And you mentioned the Hall of Fame and how the East Ends, the Mikey Stadium Preservation Project, will play a role in that. The 2021 Army Sports Hall of Fame class, the induction ceremony, September 17th, weekend of the Connecticut game, nine inductees. That's always a lot of fun. And I know, Mike, it's something where no Hall of Fame last year because of COVID. You were part of it in 2019, so it'll be your second Hall of Fame class you're able to preside over. Yeah, and it's one of, the, it's one of my favorite things as the athletic director, to, to have the opportunity to make those phone calls to these men and women um, who have impacted Army West Point Athletics you know, decades ago in, in most of their cases, to get a chance to make those phone calls um, and hear them you know, it's almost always a stunned silence when they consider some of the names that they will be enshrined uh, among. And it was great. I got to make those calls in 2019. Obviously, 2020, we, we made the decision, hey, we're not going to we're not going to virtually induct these these incredible athletes. And so really excited, as you mentioned, for the UConn game to, to welcome these nine legends of, of Army West Point athletics back to post and recognize them accordingly. 
Time for our next question, Carrie Lee Campbell from Facebook Live. And again, you can drop your questions in for Mike, buddy. We'll be here taking and get to as many as we can here on Ask the AD. And she wants to know, with all the talk about Texas and Oklahoma changing conferences in 2025 and changes that are perhaps imminent in college football, do you still see Army staying as an independent? Yeah, and you know, Rich, I, I should have opened with this. Um, you know, the the SEC had to kind of fall back and and offer Oklahoma and Texas um, membership because we we had turned them down. They originally came to us. Uh, obviously, I'm I'm kidding, um, but but that's a great question. And and honestly, it's my job to have my 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 thumb on the pulse of the national scene. And so, um, any athletic director in the country, whether you're currently at a Power Five and you're trying to to make sure that you stay in the Power Five, or if you're a group of five athletic director like like me, um, it's our job to make sure that when when the music stops, there's a chair for you to sit in. And so, um, you know, the most candid response that I can give is we have a pretty good formula. We, Coach Munkin, General Williams, myself, uh, we have a really good formula for uh, what puts us in the best position to be successful, as, as we describe, as we define success. Um, and, and our recipe is working fairly well right now. Um, so. We feel that uh, being an independent in football is, is the best course of action for us. But we also know that the answer today might be completely different in 10 days if, if these dominoes continue to fall. So we'll continue to monitor it. Uh, but, but as of today, our style of football, um, our, our international brand, uh, that we're able to actually schedule games in October, November, December, which is not always easy to do for, for just any other school. Um, it really lends itself to us to be able to control our schedule, control our destiny, and put our kids in the best possible position to retain the Commander-in-Chief trophy and to go to a bowl game. So um, that's our course of action today, but obviously tomorrow a, a, could be a different story. Speaking of Army schedule, Army's opponents in retaining the Commander-in-Chief's trophy, of course, the Air Force game on November 6th this year will be played at Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas. First of a two-year agreement would normally be Air Force's home game this year. Army's, of course, in 2022. Tom and Deb Berger are asking, Mike, will the Air Force game from now on be played on a neutral field, or is this just a two-year deal? Yeah, so it's a two-year deal. Um, so Nate Pine is my counterpart at, at the Air Force Academy, who, who used to work at West Point, certainly has, has great relationships as a you know, we had conversations early in my tenure uh, about dipping our toes in the water and let's see if this could could work. Obviously, the state of Texas is a phenomenally military friendly, patriotic state. And so it made a lot of sense. And, and our partners at, at Globe Life Field there in, uh, outside of Dallas um, made a really nice proposal. Uh, we, we think the venue is is interesting as a baseball field, but the surrounding area um, is is going to be phenomenal. The atmosphere, uh, the pageantry that will surround that game is going to be um, very unique. And so, um, long story short, it's a two-year deal. Um, they, you know, they want to continue the conversation, but we have only committed to these two years. Each academy gave up a home game. Um, frankly, you know, we're glad that we're not going up there to play at altitude uh, out in Colorado Springs this year. The trade-off is, you know, we lost the opportunity to host them and and sell the the tickets that we normally do for that game, but. Uh, after 2023, we'll reevaluate. But as of today, it's just a two-year deal. Tickets for that game, of course, all Army games here in 2021 can be purchased online, armygameday.com, as well as by phone, 877-TIX-ARMY. So Army and Air Force, of course, November 6th in Arlington, Texas at Globe Life Field. Mike, an initiative that we've launched, and you've been a big part of it, is Army West Point Authentic. Memorabilia, armygameday.com slash memorabilia. And I know uh, it's something we had some 1998 World Series baseball sign. There's still a Mike Buddy autograph picture up there as well. And they are selling. They're flying off the shelves. So we got some uh, authentic Army Navy helmets, pylons from the Army Air Force game. I know it's something, Mike, you've been really excited about launching here at West Point. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, my parents have asked you to take that down because they're sick of buying the pictures of, of me that you keep putting up there. But, um, you know, it, it, Rich, it's credit to you. It's a credit to Mike Herity, right? So Mike joined us literally three days before the pandemic hit. He came from Notre Dame. And one of the things that I felt that Notre Dame does extremely well is embrace their history and think outside the box. And, and Mike kind of brought that idea with him. 
Uh, and if you think about it, you know, we have a phenomenally loyal and passionate fan base. And so we have a football coach and, and, and alums like Pete Dawkins, who couldn't be more generous with their time and their energy. And so Mike said, hey, do you think there's a market for this type of opportunity? We've been incredibly creative, whether it's, you know, Coach K or Pete Dawkins or Coach Munkin. Because every football game you play, there's, you know, there's orange pylons and there's footballs and there's goalposts and things like that, that, you know, you don't, most schools just kind of cast them off and, and we've taken advantage of it, especially during COVID, you know, it served two purposes. One, it's generated some revenue. Certainly, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to change the face of army athletics, but number two, it's a great way to keep fans engaged. You know, if they find, if you're, if you're a collector and, you know, Rich, I'm looking over your shoulders, like, Things like this can matter. And if you want to bid on it, that's awesome. Uh, and if you don't want to bid on it, you know, it's certainly not offensive, but there are some really unique things on there that, that you know, signed photos of, of Coach Parcells from his days at West Point. Very unique. And, and Mike and, and you, Rich, have done just a phenomenal job of getting that word out. We think it's going to take five to 10 years before people have really kind of figured out that this exists and we can go to it. But you know, we've launched it and uh, some people have probably gotten some really good deals on some very unique items, but uh, I'm really excited as, as a collector myself, you know, I just love looking to see what might be on there uh, the next week. The full array of items available on Army West Point Authentic. You can go to the eBay store on ebay.com, search the seller Army West Point. Everything is listed out there. Two current auctions going on, a pylon used in the Army Air Force game, of course, the game which pledged the Commander in Chief's trophy for the Black Knights in 2020, as well as a shut authentic model helmet styled after the one worn by Army in that 2020 Army Navy game. Again, ebay.com, search Army West Point as the seller, and you can get to all of that there. And we'll have new items rolled out throughout the month of August. And of course, during the football season, a lot of special things planned on a weekly basis. Mike, you mentioned Saturday, the initial contest an exhibition women's soccer against boston college and it's the fall debut of one of our four new coaches here at west point tracy chow who of course coached in the spring season for army women's soccer tracy chow women's soccer brian plotnick men's soccer missy traversi women's basketball michelle Tumalo in women's lacrosse how excited are you to welcome the quartet of coaches here to west point yeah, you know, they they really kind of helped breathe this, just a fresh air. You know, there's a lot of times when you get new folks who come to West Point, and, and I experienced it, you know, just over two years ago, Rich, at having my press conference, you, 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 you tend to sometimes get a little stagnant and forget how special West Point is. And so anytime you get this jolt of electricity, and, and those four coaches all have the energy and the, the focus that that made us obviously choose them to lead our programs, um, but their energy and just their their thankfulness and their gratitude every day uh, to get a chance to work with the, the young women and young men uh, that they work with, it kind of breathes life into us. It reminds us what a special place West Point is. Uh, and these coaches, you know, they from their experiences across whether they're coming from Adelphi or Notre Dame or Dartmouth and all the schools that they've amassed their, their experiences from, um, really puts them in a position to, to just keep on rolling. You know, that comes with uh, sometimes at the expense of losing some really great coaches. And so, you know, what I'm excited about and what I, I have some pride in, and certainly Boo Corrigan deserves most of it, but when, when a Russell Payne gets the opportunity to go to a Big Ten school and, and Kristen Skyra gets to go to the ACC, like that's wonderful. You know, those are, those are life-changing jobs. And and they've done a phenomenal job for us, or they would never be in a position to get those jobs. And then for us to be able to just plug in Brian, a Brian Plotkin and Michelle Tumalo and not skip a beat uh, just speaks to the work that they've done and, and the position that our cadet athletes have put those programs in to attract such talented coaches. And those four coaches hired here in 2021, the four newest coaches here at Army West Point Athletics. Gary Parks has a question. Mike wants to know, how is 2021 football recruiting going? Well, I think we both have really big smiles, Rich. So um, it, it could not be going better. Um, Coach Munkin is, has developed a, a, a great um, process over his tenure here. Obviously, it's working. Um, and it's working at a level where um, 
he, he continues to find diamonds in the rough. Uh, he, he is finding young men who may be a little bit under the radar that we see something in. And then you plug in a Brent Davis or a Nate Woody uh, and the way that they and their staff can develop talent um, is obviously a recipe that is, that is working well. We've had these events the, the, the past few weekends that we're currently in a dead period um, that coaches has started calling night on the Hudson. Uh, and they're just a, an, an immersion opportunity for any young man interested in joining the football brotherhood. Um, they come to West Point, we show them what it's like to be a cadet, the academics, uh, and certainly our athletic facilities and, and the yield has been off the charts. Ironically, uh, last year's recruiting class, our current plebes who are finishing up beast um, have been very impressive. And if you, you, you think about the, the realities of that recruiting class, most, if not all of them, have never set foot on West Point. They certainly never made a, a quote unquote recruiting visit. And I think uh, West Point really took advantage of their, their history, their tradition, and their reputation. Because if you were a, a senior in high school when COVID hit, and you're not able to go visit and see weight rooms and stadiums and video boards, uh, hopefully the, the types of kids that we attract and their parents sit down and say, well, hey, what's, what's an education that's going to that's gonna serve you well for the rest of your life? And you know, what reputation can we rely on to be consistent and reliable? And, and West Point has to be among the top. And so we've had two really good recruiting classes. Um, our commitment, you know, I, I've lost, I've lost can I think we've got over 20 commits already in this, this latest uh, slew of, of young men. So really excited. And, and, and I will say this, this is my go-to line. I've been doing what, I've been in this business for 15 years. I've never had a coach when I say, hey, how do you feel about your recruiting class? They never say, well, you know what? It's pretty terrible. You know, I, I really dropped the ball. I just couldn't find anybody good. So I just offered some kids. So coaches are always thrilled with their recruiting class. But when you've got a track record, uh, like most of our coaches here, if they're excited, I'm excited. Bigger, faster, stronger, right? Every year. Every year. One more, one last question we have here. Daniel Reed said his question and he actually sent it via text. He wants to know, Mike, how can you let Gus Sinski double off you and then let a slow, there was another word put in there, score the only run of the game against a chump like Billy Chapel? Yeah. So it was, it was wind aided. Um, appreciate the question, Daniel. Um, you know, I'd fallen behind in the count because I thought the umpire squeezed me a little bit. And then, you know, I basically hit Gus's bat with the ball and it was a wind aided bloop and he, he stretched it into a double. So uh, like any good pitcher, I blame my outfielders and I blame the umpire. And that question from Danny Reed, he's the play by play man at Georgia Southern, one of the good guys in our industry. And he reached out to me, of course, a reference to for love of the game a movie, which you earned your SAG card for, I believe, working with Kevin Costner. How often do you get references like that? People ask me. Uh, probably more than you'd expect. Uh, about the same regularity that I get uh, um, checks in the mail. The, the checks that I get now for residuals, they're about $2, about every three nice. or four months. Um, so, you know, I've got to keep my day job. My, my acting career um, was, was not what it, I had hoped it would be. Well, Mike, this is great doing this inaugural edition of Ask the AD. Hit on a ton of topics and look forward to doing this periodically throughout the 2021-2022 athletic season. And, you know, we'll put the word out. Folks watching on Facebook Live, we'd like to thank each and every one of you. Drop those questions in the comments section. We'll, of course, get to as many as we can at a chance, really, to one-on-one -on -one, uh, get your questions answered by Mike Buddy, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics. Mike, thanks so much. Thank you, Voice. Beat Navy. Absolutely.